As the ancient Israelites wandered in the wilderness, they suffered and spoke against God and against Moses. And the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and the snakes bit them, and many died. The people recognized their sin and asked Moses to pray that the Lord would take away the poisonous snakes. But rather than take away their affliction, the Lord commanded Moses to make one of the snakes, set it upon a pole, and told him that whenever someone was bitten, if they looked at the snake, they would live, and it was so. Can you imagine being wounded in such a way, but not be willing to look if looking would heal you? Well, what if you weren't even sure that your symptoms were caused by a snake bite? Or what if you thought you were fine? Would you look anyway, just in case? The Book of Mormon tells us, because of the simpleness of the way, or the easiness of it, that there were many who perished. The Book of Mormon also tells us that the reason some of the people would not look was because they did not believe that looking would heal them. According to the Book of Mormon, something has spiritually wounded us, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, collectively. The Lord told Moroni in Ether 4 that the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon, quote, shall not go forth unto the Gentiles until the day that they shall repent of their iniquity and become clean before the Lord, end quote. We can know that we are still holding on to iniquity because the Lord told us in Doctrine and Covenants 84 that the whole church is under condemnation, and our current church leaders have reiterated that this is still the case. In the recent special broadcast to the Relief Society, President Nelson reiterated his plea to the women of the church. Sisters, we need your voice. Teach the doctrine of Christ. We need your ability as women to detect deception and to articulate truth. We need your inspired wisdom. Your family, the church, and the world need you. As a woman in this church, I have prayerfully sought to know the truth about my identity and eternal destiny, and I have been overjoyed to see that the doctrine of Jesus Christ does not include a doctrine of many wives and concubines. I see that polygamy is not of God. Not today, not 150 years ago, not ever. I acknowledge that for a variety of reasons, it can be deeply uncomfortable for us Latter-day Saints to even consider this perspective of polygamy. But what if this idea is exactly what will enable us to be healed? What if this is the iniquity we must repent of to become clean before the Lord? What if our traditions have taught us to read an exception into Jacob's sermon against polygamy that is simply unsupported by the text? We have interpreted one verse incorrectly. Look, Jacob repeats the same message over and over, rephrasing it repeatedly so it cannot be misunderstood. In verse 30 of Jacob chapter 2, Jacob explains what the Lord must do to ensure that his people do not excuse themselves in polygamy, using the things which were written concerning David and Solomon. For, he says, for this reason, for if the Lord wants a covenant people, he must command men to have one wife and no concubines. Otherwise, they end up hearkening to the abominable things which were done by David and Solomon. Without this explicit command of monogamy, men misunderstand the scriptures and seek to excuse themselves in iniquity. Look, this is exactly what happened to the Latter-day Saints. On January 2nd, 1831, the Lord told the saints that he would give them his law so that they might escape the power of the enemy. When the law was given a month later in fulfillment of that promise, in the presence of 12 elders, the Lord renewed the explicit command for men to have one wife and to cleave unto her and none else. Look, 
the next year, the Lord told the saints that they had treated lightly the things they had received. At that time, the only things the Church had received were the Book of Mormon, which clarifies that polygamy is an abomination, and revelations which, without exception, commanded monogamy. The Lord told the saints that their vanity and unbelief had brought the whole church under condemnation, and that they would remain under this condemnation until they would, quote, repent and remember the new covenant. Even the Book of Mormon and the former commandments which I have given them, not only to say but to do according to that which I have written." End quote. Look, when the church established its headquarters in Nauvoo, the Lord promised, quote, If my people will hearken unto my voice, and unto the voice of my servants whom I have appointed to lead my people, behold, verily I say unto you, they shall not be moved out of their place. End quote. The Lord said they were to be believers in the Book of Mormon, and the revelations I have given unto you. For that which is more or less than this cometh of evil, and shall be attended with cursings and not blessings, saith the Lord your God. Do you see? We were moved, and we were cursed. During the time of polygamy, we were cursed with famine, pestilence, deprivation, and oppression. Since abandoning physical polygamy, but holding to the belief in a doctrine of many wives and concubines, we have been cursed with blindness, as the Lord promised for the last three to four generations. We are blind to women's divine destiny and are thus blind to the true nature of God. Look, the completed Joseph Smith papers reveal that Joseph Smith, Hiram Smith, and other appointed church leaders preached extensively against polygamy, without exception. There are zero documents in the Joseph Smith papers which demonstrate that Joseph Smith taught polygamy. Not only that, but DNA testing has determined that Joseph never produced any biological children with any woman other than his wife, Emma. The Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, which the church just acquired, shows that the changes Joseph Smith made in regards to David and Solomon do not justify their polygamy, but in fact condemn it with greater detail and clarity. Abraham and Jacob are not condemned, and if we look, we can see why. Abram, at the persuasion of his wife and his grandson Jacob because of deception and then his wife's persuasion, both engaged in some form of this wickedness before they entered into covenant with the Lord. But they were redeemed, as we all may be, and there is no evidence that they engaged in polygamous relations after they became covenant Abraham and Israel. In Isaiah, the Lord pleads, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. God established the covenant with Abraham and Sarah. The house of Israel was scattered because Jacob's children, who were born into a polygamous system, rejected the covenant. Look. The Book of Mormon clarifies the Law of Moses, which has at times been interpreted as allowing or prescribing polygamy. The Book of Mormon testifies without exception that a man having many wives is a violation of the Law of Moses. Look, Old Testament Malachi and Book of Mormon Jacob both tell us that the abomination of polygamy led to the destruction of Jerusalem. Genesis and the Book of Moses tell us that this same abomination had spread among all the sons of men prior to the flood, wherein every soul on earth was destroyed save eight, Noah and his one wife, and their three sons, who also each had one wife. In our dispensation, do you remember what Wilfred Woodruff said the Lord showed him by vision and revelation? 
what would take place if the saints did not stop polygamy? It's in official declaration one, the church would be destroyed. I know it can be disorienting to view polygamy from this perspective, but it really shouldn't be a surprise because look, the first polygamist was a descendant of Cain and Latter-day Saint scripture tells us that he was a man who became master mayhem by covenanting with Satan. The Lord cursed this man and all his house and all them that had covenanted with Satan, for they kept not the commandments of God, and it displeased God, and he ministered not unto them, and their works were abominations. What if we won't be able to see the truth about God until we let go of polygamy? It's right there if we'll just look. In the beginning, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The image and likeness of God is one man and one woman. God commanded all living creatures to multiply and replenish the earth but only man was given the command to cleave to his wife as one flesh. Man is not supposed to look to the animals for our example, for our destiny is not to become animals. We are to look up and embrace the truth. And when we do, Zion shall look downward and all the heavens shall shake with gladness and the earth shall tremble with joy and the general assembly of the church of the firstborn shall come down out of heaven and possess the earth and shall have place until the end come. This is the covenant. I do not know why President Nelson has been inspired to plead with his sisters so specifically and repeatedly to speak up with our impressions, our insights, and our inspiration. I do know that Christ has redeemed me. He has healed me and my marriage from the wounds that the deadly doctrine of many wives and concubines has inflicted. I also know that our ancestors need us to see who the author of this doctrine is so that they can be healed and no longer be used as our excuse for refusing to look and see. Polygamy is not of God.